Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. As you might remember in the last episode, I have quit in the middle of Sector 6, Task 7, where I have to convert some uh, suffix of these strings to uppercase and replace a prefix of the string. And I actually realized a couple of things in the meantime, which is um, I tend to capitalize some more characters here than uh, I am expected to. So actually, probably, I just once again did the wrong calculation here. So what I'm going to do is do a division by 2 and add 1, because division by 2 should be, um, in this case, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, so I capitalize the last 2. In this case, it's uh, 3 plus 1 is 4, so I capitalize the last 2 as I'm supposed to. Uh, in this case, it's 4 plus 1, so I capitalize the last 3 as I'm supposed to. That, so that's probably um, now capitalizing the right number of characters. Yes, it does. Okay, and another thing I actually realized is that the output strings are shorter, uh, not all of them, in this case it works, but for the others there is a character missing. So I'm not doing a transformation of the whole string here, but I'm doing something else. Um, and my idea is to say, okay, we have the string and we take a substring from it, which is uh, the last characters as we're supposed to. So we from start plus one, and we two uppercase them. I think this method exists on string, and then we it, we add a suffix, which is actually um, can can be one more. So this is the suffix starting from um, the the start index we calculated before. We don't need this anymore, and let's see what happens here. This works for the first input. Hopefully it also works for the other inputs. Yeah, sometimes sometimes I tend to uh, take over the solutions from the last task to the next task uh, without looking at the differences and in this, this case it bit me because it was not a transformation of the whole string but only a transformation of part of it, but now I got it right, uh, get the whole solution and even a good skill rating so I can continue to the next task. Let's see what have we got here. We got two input strings and we're supposed to return integer. So for a string AA and a string AAA I'm supposed to return three for AA and 5 times a, I'm supposed to return 5. So from what I see, it's just the length of the second string. This is probably not it, but I'm going to return it. It should fulfill the test cases I have here. Okay, but it does not fulfill that test case, so in this case I return uh, the other length, length, so maybe it's just the longer length I'm supposed to return here. And actually, that's it. Finish the task. Let's continue. I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to use this math, max, and min functions. I, of course, I could implement this uh, also by conditions, but I think it's much more concise and more readable. So in real life, at least, I would do it like that. So let's see what we have got here. Again, we have two input strings, and this time we are supposed to return an output string. And uh, we are supposed, for A and D, we're supposed to return AD. For A, B, and A, we're supposed to return AB. And for A and A, we're supposed to return AA, which is interesting. So the first test case looks like simple concatenation. 
but the second test case actually doesn't this is only the first so it could be um, could be that I return if a dot length is bigger b dot length then I return a if a dot length is smaller b dot length then I return b and in the other case I concatenate a and b this would fulfill my three test cases uh, I've seen just now and if there are other test cases that are failing hopefully the tool will tell us uh, so we can find a way to include them I'm not really sure why the solution computation is that slow today. Uh, maybe my internet connection, maybe the problems get more difficult for the symbolic execution engine in the background. But uh, in any case, it's a little annoying. Uh, by the way, speaking of something completely different, in the meantime, I've uh, managed to submit uh, bug reports about the problems uh, we found in earlier episodes. And uh, unfortunately, I'm still waiting for a reply from Microsoft um, about these bug reports. I hope they can do th something about it. And in the meantime, the engine computed our result, uh, told us that we're correct, and that we even got a good skill rating for that. So, we can continue on to the next task. I try to capture the code fragment. We get in a string and supposed to return an int. Um, for an A, we're supposed to return 0. For 2A, we're supposed to return 0. For 3A, we're supposed to return 1. Um, interesting. So maybe it's just string length divided by 3, just a wild guess. And actually I was lucky with that guess. And finish the task, full skill rating, continue. Next one. Um, we get in two integers in a string, we're supposed to return a string. And from the test cases, I see that for 0, 0 and the string, I'm supposed to return the string. And for 0, 0 and another string, I'm supposed to return the same string, which is quite interesting. So maybe I just return a a for a start but for b a i'm supposed to return b b okay that's interesting i don't really get it by now but if string equals b uh, b a sorry return bb. I want to have some more test cases to see what's going on. For bb the string starts with b return bb and in the other cases return okay it appears currently I don't see any differences for i and j so I'm just returning two times the first character of the string. This would be um, s2, or not even, that's not even necessary. I could just return s char at 0 plus s char at 0. This should work. No, I cannot implicitly convert that, so we have to explicitly convert it. Um, 
So I guess I can just cheat like this. Interesting. Now we get... Uh, ah, of course, I get it. It's the ETH and the J's character. No, it's not. Interesting. Because... Um, for a longer input string, apparently something changes. Something I can't see yet, but if s length equals 3, then maybe it's some other combination. So it's still a string and it's s char at j and at i and maybe again at i and maybe then at j just a completely random guess how this longer string is composed and actually a wrong guess. Interesting. So there was only one case which was i0 and j1 where I am supposed Maybe this is actually a substring. No, it's not a substring. We had the BA case that is supposed to be BB. It's not a substring. It's not a substring problem uh, I have to solve here. So the thing is if i equals 0 and j equals 1 then we return a full string because that was the case. I want to have some more test examples. So for the input AAB we want to have AAA actually if I have 0 and 1. I didn't really see the pattern yet, but I guess there is one as last time there was one. Okay, so apparently I just got the pattern wrong. Say it's S char at Y at I and then two times S char at why that's pattern I see from the test cases I get now, but that's probably not it yet. Because now I actually have a string of length 3 and I get an output of length 4 for 0 and 0. which is really interesting. So the output depends on the length of the input and apparently also on the difference between i and j but I did not really see, I don't really see a pattern yet. So apparently this is not just about single characters but it's again about substrings, so my guess would be to return as substring from i plus 1 plus s substring from j plus 1 because uh, in this case we have both 0, so plus 1 would be in both cases uh, 1, so just the last character. Uh, in this case also it would be uh, two for both, so only the last character gives us two. In this case it would be the last two characters and the last character 
in this case it would be the last two characters and again the last two characters which would work here I'm not sure the, about the examples with different characters so maybe it's not the last uh, last number but the first number um, yes it probably is because here we get A, B and we're supposed to return A's not B's so it's actually from 0 to I and from 0 to J that might work nope but it doesn't why doesn't it ah uh, okay okay now I'm too short actually so this this conversion was wrong apparent, apparently um, because now we get the wrong length of the overall string so if I would use i and j plus 1 in the end and this would not work out because then this string would get too long so let me just for a second go back to this solution because in this case in this case we have the character problem so this is solved with this variant but now we have a length problem we're supposed now for this case it works but for this case it doesn't because we take the string from 0 to 0 which is an empty string again so it's still an empty string instead of taking the first character so maybe I just take at least one to say uh, math max max of i and one and math math max of j and one to ensure that I have at least one character included uh, which somehow Please rewrite so that argument one of this function does not have a side effect. Uh, there's no side effects involved here. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, but I can of course just uh, say i plus plus j plus plus. Oh no, that's not that's not the. Uh, of course, that's i equals math max i1 and j equals math max j1 then again use i and j here maybe that solves the problem although I'm not really sure what the actual problem was because I'm pretty sure that math max does not have any side effects okay that's not it yet I think the prefix idea is just wrong I have 0 and 0 and inputs and I'm expected to return 6 so it's again should be the first 3 instead of the last 3 right so it's not it's not really the substring uh, but it's string length minus e minus one I think I'm confused right now but string length minus j minus minus one maybe I'm just confused right now but yeah apparently I am confused right now I am doing something 
wrong here. Let me think about it for a second. Okay, though I actually did a lot of offline experience, experimentation because I was really confused uh, by the indexing and I managed to figure it out. So um, I was not entirely wrong by saying it starts um, from I and J, the substrings. Um, and I was also not entirely wrong to say that this actually depends on the length of the string. Um, and yet another thing I was right about is that there is a minus one involved uh, for the length. The only thing I was wrong about is that in the in the length there's no involvement of i respectively j. So this is the whole solution um, I managed to come up with. It gives the full skill rating. It's actually quite simple, but it took me uh, I think about half an hour now to figure that out by uh, writing down individual cases and then try to refactor them back into one uh, that is offline because it's probably boring for you. Um, but now I can present to you the full solution. And since this episode is quite long already, I'm going to stop it here. If you like this episode, uh, please uh, feel free to share it and to like it, of course. And uh, if you like my contents in general, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, and also consider the other uh, recordings I am putting on YouTube. Uh, see you next time.